So there are several ways to share to share your notebook. One of them, this is Collab. Let me open Collab afresh. This is the, the direct URL to Collab, collab.research.com. So to share your notebook after you are done with your work, just click on share from here. You can see the share button. Then you type in the email address, iPhone. This is the this is the Google group we are using for this for the class. Anything I share with this group, all registered member that accepted the invitation to join the group, we automatically they will all automatically have access to the notebook. So these are the different share, sharing options. You can make the person editor, you can make them viewer, you can make them commenter. But your notebook, all I need is just to comment on your notebook. So you click on comment, then you send. It is by default this notebook. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? I can't, I can't, I'm not seeing your screen. Is that, is that what everyone is experiencing? Some of us can't see, see your screen. screen. No, you can see it. I think it's your network. I can see your screen now. Okay. Okay. Just tell us to start a team, then close it and start it back to work. So by default, if you don't change anything, you have this notify people, you have it ticked. If you, if you uncheck it, the person will not be notified, but the best way just leave it by default. Once you share it with the person, the person will be notified that so 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 person shares the, the document with you. So that's how to share notebook. Another to upload your, your work to notebook. This is the, the first the first page you see when you open collab.research.google.com. Then there are different options here. We have example, we have recent Google Drive, GitHub, not upload. And this by default, it will take you to the recent page. Those are the recent notebook I worked on. Then there's another option. If you are starting afresh, you can create a new notebook here. If you click on this, it will create a new notebook for you. But if you have your notebook, you worked on it locally on your Jupyter notebook, just come to this place, upload. Then you select the, you will select the notebook based on like the direction you save the notebook. As I advised earlier, it is better if you can open a folder on your desktop, you name it Python class. Then anytime you are looking for anything, you go directly to the folder. So you search for the folder in your desktop folder, then you upload it to, to Collab. When you upload it, it will, be, it will be opened automatically. For example, the, the local directory I have for this class before is, this is on my desktop. I click on my desktop from here. Then I go to the directory. This is project two. Then this is Python for data science and analytics. Then I have different folder classes. So let's say I want to work. Let's say I want to upload the theory. I will just double click on the theory, then open. So it will automatically it will be opened as something like this. So that was how you share. That's how to upload your your work to Google Collab and how to share. To have talked about that. So last week we talked about a Python list tuple set. You can or you can modify a list. A list is ordered and it allows duplicate. Tuple it doesn't allow du duplicate. It is ordered and you cannot. You it allows duplicate, but you cannot. You cannot modify. It. You cannot change. You cannot remove from it. A set is not ordered. It's it's all it's it doesn't allow duplicate value, just unique set of numbers. Then we have a, the what we'll be talking about today is dictionary. Dictionary is the fourth the fourth element, the the fourth data type for multiple for collection of data. So it's a it is ordered and it is changeable. You can change it and it doesn't allow duplicate values. So last time I didn't I forgot to talk about single tuple elements, nested list, and how to fix some basic error in Python. So let's start with that before we go to, to the Python dictionary, dictionary. So for example, if I have a list, my list, my list equals to, let me say three. Then I check the type, type list, type my list. 
I check the data type. I will see that it's a list data type. That means it's possible for me to have a list with just single element. Let's check the same thing. Let's check tuple as well. Now let's check set. And I will check the data type of my set. You can see that the data, the data type is set. Then let's do the same thing for tuple. Is something wrong? You can see the data type is as what? What do we see here? Integer. This is integer. So to create a tuple of a single element, you we put comma. We put comma. We can't create a single element without putting comma. If you create just single element, it won't it won't read it as a top, it will read it as a single value, sing, sing, single integer value. You can see this now. This is a topple element. So that's how to create a topple of just one element. Then we have nested list. Let's say my list student equals to a nested list is like you put a list inside inside another another list and you can have as many of them as possible. For example, let's say today. Bola and color. Inside it, you can have another list. Then one, two. Back. Inside this list, you can still have another list. What the? Maybe of cards. So this is a nested list. A list with many other lists. For example, this is the parent list. The, look at this square bracket very well. The opening one and the closing one, that's the parent list. Then inside it, we have how many elements? One, two, three. Everything from this place to this place will be the fourth element. Then inside the fourth element, it still contains some other things. Is this the first element of the fourth element? The second element of the fourth element? The third element of the fourth element? Then the fourth element of the fourth element is also a list. Then inside that list, we have two elements, which is water. This water will now be the first element of the first element of the first element of the fourth element. So to access this yam, let's try to access the yam now. Students. You know, in indexing is Python starts from zero. Then we start from this one will be zero, one, two. Everything from year to year is three. So this place is three. Then we need this yam. This yam. So we for the first element will be zero, one, two, three, three. Then we come outside of it, another square bracket. That's the another list from the third element. Then will be one, two, zero, one, two, three. Everything here is the third element. Then we write, we write our three. Let's check that. So we have we have these elements now. Then we need yam to get to access the yam. Just put from this third element. Now we have zero one. Then we put one. Do we get that? Yeah, but my question is: if you use curly bracket, is it good? Is it the same thing? No, we are, we index by you making use of square brackets to access the no. element of a list. We use square no. brackets. I'm not talking about the indexing. About oh, the... you are talking about instead of a list, if we have something like let's say a set, right? No. Something like this. No, no, the other bracket. Not this curly bracket, as in the oh, normal, the parenthesis. normal par parenthesis. Yes, like this. Yes. No, 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 not this. Like this. Yes. If we use this, is it the same thing? 
Uh, yeah, it's the same thing. But you know, we are not talking about list now. This is a topple. And that is the reason why I'm saying that if you use this thing, this parenthesis is for topple. Is it the same thing? Is it going to work? Let's, let's just try. Let's try it out. Let's see. So we have our yam. It is telling us that this is the way we access is the same thing. So, for example, if we want to access this cat now, we we'll first check it out. This is the first element, the second element, the third element, and everything from this place to this place is the fourth element. How do we know that? Let, let me click on this square bracket. We can see that this one it is kind of highlighted. Then this this one it is telling us that this one starts from here and it ends here. Can we see the uh, the kind of highlight uh, highlight highlights here? Highlight. Can we see it? So to access the cards now, we are. This is the first element, second element, third element. The fourth element that will be four. No, that will be the index will be three for the first element. Then zero, one, two. Everything from yam to water is three. Then we have card four. Then instead of having three here, we have four here. Then we delete this one because we don't need it. We have our cards. Can anyone tell me if you want to access color? How do we do that? How do we go about it? Color is just the, third, the second one. Just so what, what do I what do I sign? Use only one parenthesis. Use only one uh, one of the parentheses and you okay. put two. 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 Okay. color. Now we have color. What about if I want to access these two? Which one? Two. Yes. Put two put two three, another bracket. Two. You said what? You put three in the first bracket, then in the second parenthesis, you put you put uh, one. 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 Okay, that's good. To make it easy, just start from the like start from very simple, from the simplest way. Just they check one, two, three. Then I want to access something from this. Then put four, put three. Then you will check the elements you have in the three. Um, someone is saying something in the chat box. Aren't you supposed to use curly brackets for that? No, no, we use square bracket for indexing. Indexing is accessing element of a list. Okay. Okay. So for the third, third element, now we have this one, two, three, four, five. Those are the things we have. Then you need yam. You know that yam is zero, one, two, three. It's in the third element. You put three. Then you check. Still have yam. Then yam is. Second year zero one. Then we we'll put the one. That, that's that about that. The next thing is to talk that we talked about nested list is how to fix error in Python. Actually, there is no straight way to this. It depends on the kind of error you are having. For example, I name my list student, then I'm 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 checking student with capital S. I will, I'm going to get an error message. Name error name student all this everything you are seeing from this place to this place they are just i don't, I don't know what they are here they are just like python it, it, they, are, they, they don't really have any meaning but the main thing to do is the last line that's where the error message is it's telling us that the error is name error and the name student is not defined i will be saying i have students here now why 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 do i have this error check go back to the name check the name very well for example this place i have capital s then here yeah, I have small s. So my list is with small s, not capital S. So that, that, those are the things I have in the, in the list. So today we'll be talking about Python dictionary. Dictionary are just used to store data. They are they are like key value pair, just like normal dictionary we have. Okay, you want to search for the meaning of, let's say, bag. You will go to bag, then you see the definition in front. The keyword will be the bag, then you have the definition in front of it. That's how dictionary works in Python as well. So it's a collection of items. It is ordered. Then you can change the value, but and you cannot you cannot put duplicate value like the same item twice more than once. So there are a lot of ways to access uh, to access item from a Python dictionary. So I will start by creating a dictionary here. There are two ways to do that. My dic bit equals to. You can do this. You can use the dict keyword. Keyword. So to create dictionary, we make use of this 
curly bracket. We know we use this set, this the same curly bracket where we're talking about sets, the one that doesn't allow duplicate value. We use the same thing for, for dictionary, but the difference between them is dictionary contains P and value pair. For example, I have students. My school. Okay, let me start with name. Then there must there must be this colon. Then let's say Ahmad. Then you have school. Let's say we. Then we have departments. Then we have H. That's it. So we, we can see this is the this is the key. The first key is name. The value for the name is Ahmad. The second key is school. The value for the school is OAU. The third the third key is department. The value for it is microbiology. Then the last key is H. The value for it is 24. Let's check our dictionary. What we have there, my dix. I see we have the the outputs here. Then we want to check the type of the dictionary. Type it. Type my bit. All the questions. I hope all these people say apply on this collab is the same thing. Isn't it with Python? Can I your mic, please? If you are. Eh? Please. I don't know. Can you hear me? I didn't hear the question very well. What I said is that I hope all the rules that is applied to these collabs is the same thing with Python. Yes, almost the same thing. By default, it's the same thing, but there are some, we know there are some shortcuts in Jupyter Notebook. If you want to use them on your collab, you need to make use of some other keys. For example, if normally if you want to run, you will press shift enter for window. The same thing for collab. But if I want to delete a cell, for example, let's say I want to delete this uh, last cell. In Jupyter Notebook, I will just press D, D, D twice. It will be deleted. But for collab, I need to press Control M, D. You see? So that's that, that's one of the differences. But by default, it's almost the same thing. Okay. So this this are the these are this the data type for my dictionary. It is telling me that a dict. Dict is a short form of is just a short form for dictionary. Then to access elements of a of a dictionary, there are there are many ways to do that. You can start by using my dict dot get the get keyword. I'm changing this to this to make it faster. So dict dot get then I want to get the name. It's Ahmad. I want to get the school. I just put school. F O A U. Then I want to get all the values. I want to check all the values, the key in my dictionary, the name, school, department, and age. So it will be dict dot values dot keys. Get school and dot keys. And I have the keys. The name, school, department, and the age. The same thing, dict dot, dot values. I will have the value for can each. Can you hear me? Things. I can hear you. Please, can you um, increase your, your screen size? It's actually at 100% right now. You can actually okay. zoom in.
Is everyone having a problem with this screen? Not me, actually. You have to zoom in. When you zoom in, you can see what is going on. Mm. Or probably if you if you are viewing the participant, you will not be able to view the complete screen. You need to cancel the participant before you can see the full screen. So to get the value, dix.values, we have the values, Ahmad, OAU, microbiology, then 24. I can add an item to my dictionary. For example, I can say dix. There are many ways to do that. Dix dot We have the name, the age. The, what other thing can we add to the dictionary of, the, of that particular students? Any idea? Hello, what do you want us to add to the dictionary of the students? Relationship status. You said, okay. Maybe cross. Relationship. And what do Gen you want us to add? Gender. Want, what, what do you want the value to be? Single. Okay, so single. So we now check the dictionary again. Six. Mm -hmm. We are saying we have the relationship now. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And dictionary is ordered. It start from age, mm -hmm. department, name, mm -hmm. relationship, school. We see that it is ordered alphabetically. So that's one way to add an item to a dictionary. Mm -hmm. so to add an item to a dictionary. Another thing we can do is to, to use the updates. Dix dot updates. What other things do you want us to include? GP. Gender. Okay, gender. Someone says GP, someone says gender. Okay, let's make use of gender. That's very important. It's part of the body data. Let's say male. So let's check our dictionary again. We can see that we have the gender now. And the the other A D G N R S. Can you can you help us mute your mic, please? Another thing we can do, we, we said that dictionary is changeable. For example, maybe we find out that uh, is Hamad is not in a in a relationship. You can, or Hamad just got married. You can change the value of this relationship to marriage. Let's do that. Dix. Then you said Ahmad. Ah, oh, relationship. Relationship. Also. So now we check the value. Check our dictionary again. You see, it has changed from single to what to married. So we can check for the for the keys. Do we have gender in our dictionary? Gender in this. Yeah, we have gender. Let's see if you have GP. GP index. So we don't have GP. What we can do, we can decide to add the GP. We can just leave it as it is. So that's how to, to add elements to a dictionary. It's, it's either we make use of dict relationship, a new one, then you assign it, or you use the update. You know the difference between these two. This one you use this indexing as you are imputing a new element into it, then you assign the value to it. Another one, if you are using the updates, you must maintain the first curly bracket we used when we are creating when we are creating the dictionary. This curly bracket, you must use it again. So that's how to update a dictionary. So to remove dictionary, to remove an item from the dictionary, maybe we don't, we are no more interested in its gender. Let's say we are no more interested in its gender, we can use dict.pop. 
dot pop. What do you want to pop? We want to pop gender. Then we check our dict again, if you still have the agenda. So we don't have the agenda anymore, so it's gone. Another thing we can use, dict.pop, pop item. And we specify the item we want to pop. And this work, I'm not sure. So it's not working. It is telling us that pop item takes no argument. So we don't need to, to put in any argument. We'll talk about argument and parameter later, maybe tomorrow. So by default, <laughs> by default, if we use pop, you need to specify what you are popping. But if you don't, if you use pop item by default, it will pop out the last element in the list. So this last, the last thing, uh, the last element added to the list will be removed, which is the relationship. We remove the gender already. Then after that, the next, like the last element is the relationship. Let's check our dictionary now. So we don't have the relationship. We don't have it in our dictionary again. So that's also removed. Two ways to remove the, the, an element from a dictionary. The first one, you use pop, then you specify the key. Another thing, you use pop item to remove the last element added to the dictionary. Then you can loop through, you can remove, you can loop through your dictionary and you can delete a particular key. Six. Dot deal. Then you put the key. That's what I want to delete. Departments. I'm not sure this is going to work because I have this red line already. I'm not sure. Let's try it. So it's not working. What do we do? Invalid. Oh, the delete is for the the old the, the whole of the dictionary. So, if you want to clear all the elements in the dictionary, just use this dot clear. With the clear method, you are still going to have the dictionary, but it's going to be an empty dictionary, nothing inside. After I cleared it, I have the dictionary. But if you want to delete it, we don't even we don't want to have the empty dictionary again. Just speak dot delete. So del then I'll try to check my dictionary again if I still have it. So we can see name dict is not defined. Since I deleted it already, I cannot access it anymore. So another thing we can do, I will, I will try to create the dictionary again by copying this line so, so that we'll be able to look through our dictionary. For I am dict print I. This for I in this is like I'm telling the program for each of the elements 
in the dictionary, print the element for me. Oh, I didn't put I in the print statements, print I. So I only have, I only have the key, the keys, the name, school, department, and the age. So if another fancy way to do this is to write for elements, or for elements, for elements in dictionary, then print the elements. So I have the keys to each of the value. I can print the key separately, I can print the value separately, and I can print the two of them together. Values in bits.value. This is going to be value since I'm dealing with each one of them. I have the value Ahmad OAU microbiology and 24, which is the age. Another thing I can do for this exactly like this, instead of using dict.value, I'll use dict.keys. Then print the key. So I have name, school, department, and age. I can also loop through the key and value together at the same time. So that would be four. Key, comma, value in fixed dot items. So this will not be, it will not be either value or key, values or keys, it will be items. Items combines, it combines both the value and the key, it's pair them together. And key and value. You can see this, then I can separate it with semicolon, with colon. So I have it now. I want to make sure this is very close to the name. How do I do that? Let me make use of plus. We know we use plus for concatenation in Python. Print key plus colon. Let's see. Ah, it's close now. It's if I still want to maintain the, the, the space bar, the, like a single line space between the two, I just come here before this first quotation, I press the space and I have it. But I think it is better this way. So that's how to, to print each of the value, each of the key and the value of each of the item in the dictionary. So you can copy a dictionary. Let me, let me name the student, the dictionary as a student. Students. Then two equals to it. But copy. Then I check what I have there. So I have it copied. Another way to copy as a student three equals to it. Then it's the first dictionary I have. And I take what I have there. So I still have the dictionary. There are two ways to copy to copy. It's either you use your, your initial dictionary dot copy, then you have it. Another thing you can do is to cast. This is casting. You cast what you have into another dictionary called students. 
just like we convert integer to string, for example, int, int two, then your two is a string. It will be converted to an integer data type. That's casting. Someone wants to ask a question. Hello. So that's it. Those, those, that's what we have on that in Python dictionary. The next thing we are supposed to do is. I have a question. Python function. What's the question, please? The casting you did. Why don't yeah. we say like m um, student three equals to dict? Won't it work? Instead of using um the function and then the var the variable name. The, you are talking about this. Yes. No. No. The 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 fifty seven. Okay. I should do what? What if we used then three equals to dict? Okay. Let's try it. Oh, it's it's fine too. Is that's what you're saying? Yes. Right. It's 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 fine too. Okay. We can use that too. We have the dictionary. I think we can stop here and talk about our tax one and two. So I have the solutions to each of the tasks. But you actually said that deadline for submission of tax two is tomorrow. Oh, that's true. Oh, I just remember something now. So I have to, like, I have a two kind of mini projects. The first one is to, like, a guess a number game. You try guessing the number till you guess the correct number. Then the second one is to write a code. For example, to ask you what is your ATM pin. Then after your third attempt, like, wrong pin three times, you will, be, you will be told that, oh, please visit your financial institution since you have entered incorrect password more than three times, I'll be three times consecutively. Which one should should I do? Which one should I give us assignments? Who do you want for the um, person? Because I think Can you repeat the two, the two stuff again? Can you repeat again? I OK, okay. the first one is a program. Like, you is guess a number. Then you will keep guessing. For example, let's say the number is between 1 and 1,000. If you guess 500, the program will tell you that, let's say the actual, it will be a, a random number will be generated between one and 1,000. Let's say the random number that is generated is let's say 900. Then you guess for the first time, you put 500, it will tell you that your guess is lower than the random, the, the real number. Then you try to increase it. It will be telling you that greater than or equals to T, you get the exact value. Then at the end of the program, it will tell you that you get the correct number after so, 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 after, maybe after 100 attempts. The second one is like, I think the second one is simple. You just put in your, like it will, you will ask the, the program we ask the user, hey, welcome to social -so bank. What is your, hey, please enter your four digit pin. Then you enter the password, wrong password for the first time. It will tell you, hey, it's going to tell you invalid uh, pin, please try again. Then if you enter another, if you enter a wrong pin the second time, it will tell you invalid, please try again. After the third time, the program will tell you that, oh, Sorry, you entered the wrong pin consecutive for three times. Please visit your financial institution to reset your pin. Or if if the if it is not like that, like if you enter the right pin, it will tell you access, uh, access granted. Welcome to Sososo -so -so Bank. Um, what do you think? I said the second one. The second one is actually it's the second actually one is the first one. Guess a number. And the first one, the first one is, I don't like think it. you have never made mention of it in any of your classes. Well, we, we are go, for the two programs, we are making use of everything we've been doing. Even it, it, it doesn't include what we did this night, like for past classes. That was just the things we need. You mean the guessing stuff? You have, have oh, about. there's something I've not talked about. I've not talked about no, the packages uh, uh, in Python. Okay, let me just talk about packages are just. We know Python is like a pro programming language. It has a lot of packages inside. Inside the package, we can have many modules. For example, we are going, still going to use PyPandas. We have a package called Math, import Math. 
and then and it So we have import. We have a a, a, a pro package called Mars. We have a lot of modules under Mars. So I've imported the Mars in my package now. Let's now see. If you want to check all the modules you have, just type Mars dot. I'm not sure dot directory. This one is just di like direct. We want to check all the available modules we have. So this is not going. I need to do it the other way around. So these are the different modules we have. We have this is a course like a cos theta, a cos theta, a sine theta, exponential, fab, flow division, fabs, gamma, log logarithm. We have the pi, we have the sine, we have the square root, we have tan, we have uh, tan age. I don't know. We have a lot of modules under the math package. So let's say we want to make use of the square roots. Let's say we are making use of the square roots. Math dot sq. So let's check sine 30. What's sine 30, the mathematician? 0 0.5. What's happening? Math dot sine 30. Are we using x sign? Inside, I don't know why. Maybe there is some other things to include, or there, there's a kind of way to calculate the angle. I'm not so sure, but let's go with the square roots. I imported the math already. Let's just go. Yeah. Well, can you try mass dot uh, sign, including e after sign? Mass dot sign, then? Just write the sign full. Oh, N E. Like yes. this. No, it's error. You see the red line already. Okay. Don't worry, I'll, I'll try to find out the word that. Pass dot square root. Let's let's check the square root. Square root of nine. I think you are fine with this. So to use a, a this is like the parents folder, like the parent module, then the child mode, daughter mode, or child module. This square root is is inside the math. So you are we are using these dots to reference this. For example, we can have as a math. Someone will explain this to me. Math okay. dots. dots. It doesn't exit. I just want dots. Find dots. Dots. Who can explain this? The line of code there. Which one is the like the smallest? Then the one with the highest hierarchy. What did you say, sir? Can you explain the line of code like the the degree of hierarchy? The relationship between these uh, these, these four modules. I think the first one is cos to sine then to square root. I guess. Like the really, you said what? From cos to sine to square root. Okay, like this this everything here. The math it contains the square root module inside math. We have the square root module. There can be there can be many other modules apart from the square root as well. But inside that square root, we still have a module cos sine. Then inside that sine we. we <coughs> We have another module called cos, called cos. So that's how it works. And inside, for example, each one of these, this GDC pi plus, some of them can they can have many other modules inside them. So that's how, how it works. One of the modules. Is that what? Yeah. How will this code run like that? You know, is mass. No, no, it, it the code doesn't exist. I just tried it to to explain the the hierarchy, like the the relationship between different parts between packages and modules. There's not there is nothing like this. There is nothing like this. I just use it as an example to explain the, the kind of relationship. Once you have this dot, 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 it means this last one is inside this one. Then this one is inside this one. Then this one is inside the last one. Here. 
this is like the mother of all of them. For example, let's say you have, how should I explain it? Let's say you have a bag. Then you have like four, four different compartments in your bag. You have the major one, the big one where you put your books. Inside that one, you still have another compartment. Inside the compartment, you still have another one. You have another compartment outside the bag where you put your pen. You open it inside it, you still have some other compartment, maybe where you put your, 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 your let's say, sharpener or, or cleaner. Do you get? Yeah, I grab, I grab. So that was what another. Another separate package is random, import random. Yeah, random, random dates and stuff. So inside, let's check the, the modules we have inside the random. So these are the modules we have. Yeah, but this one with uh, underscore, I don't really, uh, like, I don't know much about them, but the major ones, they are this one without the underscore, the choice, the expo variate, the gamma variate, the Good. Then we are all the only thing we need is random integer and random. If we check this random, random we generate a random real number for us. Real number is like decimal value, for example, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. But right, rand int will generate a random integer for us. Let's say one, two, three, four, five. This sample is led just to like something. The seed is like a kind of to, for example, we want to be generating a random number. Maybe we have 10. 20, 30, 40, just the what you use it for. But for the sake of what I want to do, we need the random int and the random and the random. So we take random dot rand. So we can use rand int the random. Let's check random. It, it is not surprising, just like someone bearing, okay, we have Ahmad and his name is child Ahmad. Then we have senior Ahmad and junior Ahmad. This random, that's why they have the same name. It is just, it is still a child to the to the bigger one. I don't know if you understand the relationship here. The the package name is random. The one of the sub module inside the, the package is also random. And we also have rand int. So let's check. So this is a random number. That's another random number. That's another number. But we are not dealing with a real number. We need a particular integer, like a definite number. So we are going to use rand int. So for this, we need this one is, is a kind of function. It doesn't take any any parameter, any argument by default. But this one, there are some things to note. You can see the error message. It's telling me that rand int is missing two required position positional arguments, which is a and b. It means that I it means I need to put a range of the number I need. For example, I need a number from one to ten, between one and ten. So this is the starting point. This is the end end point. Then these two numbers will be included. Sometimes we can get one. We can get a number as, as a value as i as 10. Random. Let me import the random again. Sometimes when you have the problem with your package, just try to. Random dot random, not random on rand. It's. No, we do with. Oh, this is not supposed to take any arguments. The argument is in the wrong place. Yes, thank you. So the starting point is one, the end, end point is 10. Then the two, of, the, two, the two numbers, they can be included. So the first time I have a random number, nine, then let me run it again. And each time I run it, I'll be get, getting a different random number, eight, one. You will see the one is included now. Eight, nine, two, one, six, seven. So which pro, which program do you say I should I should write and which one do you say I should give as as an assignment? Write the second one. The ATM. <clears throat> yes. So you go you you take the guest number as a, as as the assignment.
So the, the, it will be like, okay, I have my password. Password equals to pin. Is I'm going to use the input statement. Enter your. <clears throat> then I will I will check why password why pin is not equals to we know the the meaning of this we have equals to and not equals to we are confused of two things for example we say two equals to two for this we are going to get through of us Are you true or false? True. 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 Okay. Then if I change this one to not equals to, this is how to compare with not equals to true, not equals to true. Are we going to get true or false? False. 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 Five, four. And I can change this one to five. Two is not equal to five. Yes. True. That's true. true. So that's the meaning of this. While pin is not equal to, let's say my our real pin is one, two, three, four. Why the pin is not equal to one, two, three, four? Print. Okay, the pin. We want it to happen two times. So we are going to use a for loop for i in range two. This is telling us that the range is starting from this is starting from zero one then two will not be included that means it will it will go around two times for i in range two then new pin will be it will say ask for imputes invalid okay wrong pin let's try again So this will happen two times. Otherwise, we get something like else if the password is correct. Access granted. Why is the else outside the for loop? What do you say? Why is the else outside the for loop? What is else? Oh, I will explain that. Let me finish with this statement, please. So I want to use a I want to use a multi-line string here. One, two, three. So I want to make use of multi-line string. Access granted. In another line, I will say welcome to first bank. You are asking about what the meaning of this else, right? No, I said, why is the else outside the for loop? Outside, because we want it to be executed when only when the pin is correct. That's why it is outside. It is not depending on the for loop. Okay. And it is not depending on the on the while loop why why statement as well. If this thing, if everything here is does this line, if this particular line is false, then do this for us. Okay. So I will try to run the program now. Okay. Please enter your four digit pin. Let's say and we know that the correct pin is one, two, three, four. Let me say three, four, five, six. Oh, I've entered an infinite loop. <laughs> Can we see how this green arrow is moving? So that's an infinite loop. There is a mistake somewhere. I need to interrupt. Can we see how the green arrow is going up, going and coming? Can we see that? Yes, sir. Between these four, so I need to to cancel it to interrupt it. It happens in Jupyter and Jupyter notebook as well. To interrupt in Jupyter notebook, just go to your kernel, then click interrupt kernel. You see something like this. They just interrupt. Another way to interrupt on collab is to click on this red line. So there's something is wrong. I need to correct it. 
y pin is not equals to, then I want it to happen two times. y pin is not equals to one, two, three, four. It's not equals to one, two, three, four. Then for i in range two, pin, oh, this should be inputs. Inputs wrong pin. Please try again. So let's run the code once again. So three, four, five, six. Then you see this wrong pin. Please try again. Another wrong pin. Wrong pin. Please try again. And it continues running. So I need to do something to terminate it. So what do I do? Pin equals to an input value, then in range two. I use counter. No, I will, I will use an if statement, yeah. Yeah, say something. For well, I in range two, okay. For I in range two, I want it to run just two times. Maybe, maybe we should I try and put the S under the four. If pin. No, I think a counter should be added. Like, I can't think what's to zero. No, this is taking care of that. Like, then it's greater than. If pin is still not for I in range. So pin equals to input wrong password and try your pin. Let's try if statement. If pin is not equals to before, then for I in range two. Print access granted. If pin is not equals to. It terminates the program. Okay, I need to include what happens after the, the third attempt. Incorrect. Please visit your financial institution. Let's check this. I think it's it's worked. 
So for the first time, incorrect. Reset your pin. But the reason why I add the follow pin running is because I didn't, I did not include any statements after the wrong pin for the second, for the third time. Hello, are you still with me? Yeah. Yes. So. Okay, let's check again now. One, two, three, five. And wrong. Please try again. And after the third attempt. You have this, you have entered an incorrect pin for three consecutive times. Please visit your financial institution to reset your pin. Then let's see if uh, if a correct pin is entered, what happens? One, two, three, four. So we are still in the loop. If pin is not equal to, if pin is not equal to this, So we have one, two, three, four. Oh, I've tampered with the, the original pin. One, two, three, four. Why are we still laughing wrong pin? If pin is not equal to one, two, three, four, then this will happen two times. Then we have our print statement. Print this. Then we have our else statement. Which print access granted? Welcome to First Bank. Oh, impute. Oh, I need to convert this to an to a st string. We can see the problem now. I, as I've said earlier, anything you entered by default through this impute function, it will be by default. It will always be a string. So the one to three four I entered, the program doesn't recognize it as this same one, two, three, four. So I need to convert it to an integer data type. And then let me try and terminate this. The correct thing now. I see this now, access granted, welcome to first bank. Let me stop the recording for now.